Hello guys, this is uh, the update on the whole project of the 30 rolls in 30 days. And it's, uh, well, right off the bat. Thanks a lot for watching if you're watching this and you have watched all the videos. And if you don't, you should, I guess, you should watch them uh, to know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, so today I'm going to be doing this update and tell you a little bit about the behind the scenes of the whole project. So let's go. So first, this is not going to be a super detailed video. This is more than anything just a, a video to answer some of the questions that you have uh, or that you have posed on the other videos and talk about the things that I've discovered so far. Not everything, because I want to do a video at the very end, on the uh, 31st day, and just make like a summary and explain what I've learned by manipulating the camera and what has changed in my perception of the whole thing. So. For now, what I want to do is answer some of the questions. The question that I get probably the most is how do I approach people on the street and do they, do they get mad when I take them a picture or do I ask them if I could take them a picture? And the answer is I almost never ever ask if I can take a picture. On the whole project, uh, on 30 rolls I guess I have asked probably two times to somebody if I can take them a picture. Usually I just do it. And just as a matter of perspective, bear in mind that the Mamiya C330 is huge. It's not, it's not like a Leica, it's not like a Fuji, it's not your cell phone, it's a huge beast and it draws a lot of attention. It has two lenses and everybody who sees it on the street is like, oh, is that a vintage camera? That's really nice, hey, where do you get that? Like it's, it's a conversation starter. Like what I said about the Hasselblad, that people will like see you and notice you and you will draw attention. With the Mamiya is like 10 times worse. That is, that's what I discovered. When I used to walk around with the Hasselblad, it was, it was okay. I got a fair looks and it was like, oh, people who were into photography actually approached me and we had conversations. But with the Mamiya is something universal. It, I guess it resonates on a, on a level where everybody knows it's an old camera and it looks old and everybody feels like it's from World War II, so there must be a lot of story behind it. And they either smile at you and say like, oh, this guy, it's cool, that's a nice camera, or they get mad at you like, oh, this fucking hipster doesn't know what he's doing. So you get those two extremes, at least that's, that's how I have experienced it. And by having such a big camera, it's impossible to blend on the background and be invisible and whatnot, so there's no way you're gonna do that. And the way that I have approached people now with this camera is by becoming super obviously present. And what I mean by super obviously present is I, I, I walk around with my camera and I stand next to somebody who I want to take a picture of and I just let them notice me, like they know I'm there, they know I have a camera, and, but they don't know if I'm going to take a picture of them or their surroundings and I'm usually just focusing around. And when they do something that I find interesting, I, I usually focus on them and have everything set and then just move the camera around and pretend like I'm doing something else. So when they do something interesting, I just turn, take the picture and then move around, stay there for a few more seconds. So even if they hear the click, then I just do something else with the camera that might sound also like lift the, the viewfinder or collapse it or something that would make noises. So they will hear a click and when they turn around, the camera is clicking for more stuff, like I'm moving it around. So they don't know if I took a picture or not. And then I just go. That's what I usually do. And this camera is a lot quieter than a Hasselblad. Like the Hasselblad was making this huge slap noise when the mirror was moving. But with this camera, there's like, I mean, there's a sound, but it's not that bad. And I feel like it's, it's an okay sound and it can be, like if you're out in the street, you might not hear it sometimes. It's not like a slap, it's just a, a strong click and it feels okay. Um, yeah, so it's it, you're not invisible at all by, by any means, but again, you're not invisible with any camera. I, I could take pictures with my Leica M3 and still get noticed heavily. So yeah, I, I guess more than how I approach people in general is how I approach people with this camera in particular. and. It has also given me a certain amount of connection with the people because of the camera, because of the size of the camera, because of how obvious and obtrusive it is. It has given me like another layer of understanding how to approach people on the street. With my other cameras like the Hasselblad x or the Leica M3 or Leica M8, I, I try to get close to the people and then when I'm super close I just snap a picture and 
move away. And if they don't notice me, I feel like I just did it. But with this camera, that, that's not an option. Uh, you have, you're such a menace with this big monster that you need to be perceived as friendly and not creepy. And I guess that's one of the hardest things uh, because if you're coming close to, for example, pets or kids or uh, girls standing alone and you come around with this big camera, if you look suspicious, man, it's gonna be terrible. I try actively to be as as friendly as possible and smile around and be like, play dumb as much as I can. And if I'm close to somebody, I'm just eh, having fun and then just snap a picture away. So it definitely adds uh, a performative aspect to taking pictures. At least that's my experience. The other thing that I've been asked is, when do I make the time to take the pictures? If you don't know what I'm doing this month, this month has been crazy. I just finished a theater play that I've been working on for three months. I finished that like two days ago. Uh, I'm also working in an agency as a copywriter part-time, three days a week. I am also making the consultation for a movie, for a movie script. I'm correcting the script and giving feedback and writing scenes. And I'm also writing another script. So all of that, and on top of all that, I'm doing this project. I'm developing the, 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 the films and I'm scanning them and I'm editing the videos and uploading them to YouTube and then just move on with my life. So it's a lot of stuff happening. How do I find the time to do so many things? But specifically, when do I shoot the roles? And the answer is super simple. I look at my routines and I see spaces that I have left even if they're small, and I use those spaces to do the things that I need to do, which are for this kind of projects, like projects that require very specific concentration and very specific amounts of time. Because I, I'm shooting films with ISO 100. I can't go out on the streets at night and push the ISO to 1600. I'm gonna destroy the film. So I need to go out on daylight. And what time do I have at daylight? What I usually found myself doing uh, when I was working on the agency, was waiting until lunchtime, ate my lunch, and then just run away and take the pictures for 45 minutes and then run back to uh, my workplace. So that's the reason why the first, I guess, 12 or 13 roles you see nearby Shoreditch High Street in London, because that's where the place where I was working was. So I was there three days a week and I was carrying my camera there and I was taking pictures. Uh, around Shoreditch High Street and then just I went back to my office. During those 13 days the roles that are not taken in Shoreditch High Street are taken in other instances like um, days that I had off or weekends so it's a mixture of different moments and whatnot but the main place where I was taking pictures was there. Also when we moved to Hastings uh, I also started taking pictures nearby the places where I live. Uh, the move to Hastings, I guess it's around row 13, 14. Uh, you can see there's there's a there's gonna be visits to London because I'm visiting anyway on, on the weekends. But during the week I'm taking pictures in Hastings. So there's more stuff happening here and sometimes I travel and sometimes I'm back. So the scenery is changing and the scenery changes with the times that I have and I guess that's the organic part of this project. And the whole situation of taking pictures like on those days and those dates and, and try to make it work, it has this inner contradiction that I find really interesting and it's this. I try to take the best pictures that I can because when I have the time I say okay I'm gonna take pictures for one hour and, and I go out and I try to compose the best way that I can and find pictures and find moments and discover characters and and all these things that you're supposed to do when we're taking pictures. And then at the same time, I know that I can fail pretty badly and I can just deliver shitty results because I'm practicing. And the whole thing, the whole point of this project is to practice and see your development uh, during a long period of time. Not long, but a month. Shooting every day for a month, it, it feels really long and it's tiresome and you, won't, you don't want to do it, but you keep doing it anyway because you promised yourself. So yeah try to try to collide both things it's interesting because while i am not interested in making it in great pictures and, and 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 capturing the best pictures ever i am mostly interested in try to get better at composing and framing and approaching people i am also trying to take good pictures so 
and I'm, and, I, and I'm not afraid of failing. And I guess that's, that's what I wanted to get. If you're not afraid of failing, you're gonna try new things that you have never tried before. I'm trying things that I haven't done before just because I have more time and just because I can do them. And just because I have enough film so I can waste shots. And the possibility of failing plus the need to make it work as fast as possible and in a tight schedule has given me some interesting shots. There are some shots that I'm super proud of, uh, but they are the product of this collision of contradictions. This, this inner magma that has the project within itself is this contradictory nature of try to take good pictures and not care about the pictures. And in that mixture, I think I have, I have found some pretty cool moments. So yeah, I guess, I guess I just wanted to see you guys, tell you a little bit about how I've been approaching this project. So yeah, I guess it's been an interesting experience posting one video a day. I know it can be tiresome because this format is, is very strict and there's like music and the pictures and then that's it and there's short videos. So they don't need to be the taste of everybody. But at the same time, I feel it's like a project I really wanted to do. So just like the pictures, I'm doing it for myself and like I'm inviting you to join me on this trip and this project it's not like i'm doing it because i i don't know it it has like this selfish um side to it and i guess that's the only way you can do projects right if you're doing projects because you're uh focusing on other people and what they might think i i guess there's not much point in it uh if you're not actively trying to get better or actively trying to find something then who are you doing the project for so this whole project is for me to get better at composing and get better with the 6x6 format that I, I was super reluctant to use and I was not used to and I was scared of composing for medium format, uh, square format that is. Uh, but now I feel like I'm, 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 I'm getting comfortable little by little and that's my way of uh, inviting you guys to try new things and try new formats and try new cameras or get into film. That's my whole goal. Like I want to get better and I want to invite you to try your best and if something results out of that, that's, that's great. I heard some of you started getting into film uh, and, and you have left like amazing comments and thanks a lot guys. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm super happy to be able to motivate some of you. Uh, and yeah, I guess that's it. If you wanna follow me, I have my Instagram account and I never plug in my social media, but I guess it, this is the right time. I am uploading uh, on Instagram some of the pictures that I've taken on the project and also some of the behind the scenes of the project. I, I use the Instagram stories. I'm not, I'm not like a super Instagrammer, but uh, I'm using it as a, as a nice tool to share some of the process. And if you do have an account, uh, you might want to follow me and see what I'm doing and, and, and the behind the scenes of the project. I answer questions there too. And I try to share as much as I can uh, of this whole thing, this craziness called the 30 Days, 30 Rolls project. And I guess, that's it. Um, I will keep uploading one video a day and then on day 31 I'll give my summary on the whole thing and tell you all my impressions about the camera and my impressions about the film, about scanning, about everything. But so far I just want to tell you that it's been a great month, it's been an intense experience and I will see you soon. Have a good one guys, keep shooting.